talking about straining for that logo on the side of your helmet and not the name on your back. Yes, sir. Yes, because sir. we know what it represents. It represents everybody here you see yes, and everybody you can't that we've talked about. I'm here to strain with you, man. I swear to God I'm here to strain with you. Let's go. Everything you got, strain Ooh, with everything you got. Let's go. Let's go. Bills on three. One, two, three. Bills. You're listening to the Off Tackle with John Fetus Show with your host, Joe Miller. Well, good evening, everybody. Happy Victory Monday to you. Welcome into the Off Tackle with John Fetus Show. Brought to you by Q42 on the Buffalo Rumblings Multicast and Vidcast Network. I'm your host, Joe Miller. You can find me on Twitter, Joe Miller Wired. That guy over there who's really excited, you can tell, and still feeling the vibes from being in six-degree tailgate weather, John Fina. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Miller, I don't even know where to start, man. It's like I know everybody in Buffalo, too, is on like this 48-hour high still. Yes. Going just screaming, heart still pumping. Everybody's still watching the game, re-watching it, recording it, watching it. I went back and watched it again last night. I woke up this morning and I was like, you know, I didn't I didn't watch the kneel down, like the most exciting <laughs> thing. You know, I'm like going, I'm going, and you know, the only reason I went back to watch it, I wanted to hear the crowd. Right. Because when I was there, I could hear the crowd. I was like, oh my God, they must have just gone crazy. And it was, it was awesome. Yeah. You're missing a cerveza. Oh, I never miss my cerveza. Oh, that was a good one. <laughs> I, we've, yes, got, we've got a thing going at this point, and uh, it's working. So just like the boho mojo, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna miss the crack of the can because it seems to be working. So uh yeah, appreciate you. So yeah, you got to be at that game. But before we do, let's let's talk to the wonderful people and the the the, the chat room, the comment section's filling up. Uh welcome everybody, whatever platform you're watching on. If you're on YouTube, please do us a favor and like and subscribe. Hit the little bell so you get the notifications. Uh Brian Bowers is in the room, Pops Mafia is in the room, Eric's in the room, Daniel Gowers is in the room. Whole bunch of people, uh, Brandon Stevens, who is, I think, your number one fan. Brandon Stevens is in the room. Uh, he's the guy that calls you a bad ass all the time on Twitter. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Check your language. <laughs> Robbie's, language. Robbie's in the room. Amanda Richard Rush is here. Everybody's here. So before we get started, why don't you talk about Q42 and Iman? And you were actually at the tailgate yesterday. You don't have to talk about the whole tailgate experience. Let's just talk about Q42 for a minute. Yeah, well, for one, I wanted to go see the guy, Iman over there, Q42. So I inserted myself into their tailgate, despite their uh, saying, no, don't come. <laughs> Went over, and it was it was just as I expected, if not better. I mean, they had a griddle going with the potatoes. Uh, Iman had the kettle grill cooking up the, the drumsticks and then doing the, the wing drums. The food was great. Sausage and peppers. Uh, it was fantastic. I, I put a glove on i grabbed a wing and i gotta tell you i mean the just the the flavors and his treatment of it it, yeah. it was it was awesome fantastic mm -hmm. met his wife uh met a bunch of his buddies uh drew of course was there and you know spent some time chatting it up with drew and uh, it was it was great they had an awesome setup the heat was going in one tent and the grills were going out there the, the funniest thing joe i gotta tell you man like if you just sat around nursing your beer yeah. it would start crystallizing on you <laughs> like in your hand so like the, the coolers weren't used to keep the beer cold they were used to keep the beer warm so they didn't <laughs> explode all over the place it was fantastic I, uh, I saw i saw somebody comment as to whether or not they should buy ice should i buy ice before the tailgate does that no, even make sense that doesn't make any sense <laughs> like the ice vendors are out there like they can't make their mortgage payment this month They're like damn <laughs> That's hysterical. So uh, finish up on the Q42 for us. Well, look, it's great ingredients, all natural, and the flavor really comes through. You take your time. If you're a real barbecue master, Q42 is for you. Mm. Great ingredients, good technique, and the flavors just come through between the, the dry rubs, the mustard, and the KC sauces. It's terrific stuff. Get your Q42. Go to Q42.com and enter the promo code FINASHOW, all caps, I don't know if this goes through the year or what, but you better order today. 
I all I know is that the uh, receive has been misspelled since I made this graphic, and Iman reminded me of it last week. <laughs> It's like, oh crap! I forgot to fix that. I love it. I don't know. Uh, I Jason, can't even spell that word. Jason Gottfried is in the room, and uh, he says, "We loved you. Jumped out of the suite and to celebrate with us, John." So, do you remember <laughs> meeting Jason, or were you? So I didn't catch Jason's name, but let me let me paint the picture for you. All the alumni were in the suite, and the windows opened up, and the, the first row of seats had basically a nice wide sidewalk you know, going about 15, 20 yards in either direction. So I jumped out there. I grabbed Lee Evans, the fourth 11 year old. This kid right. was awesome. So was, we just, was, Lee, was Lee Evans the third in the room as well? The yes, he, room? No, his son wow. just jumped on a flight, came in. I'm no, just wondering. So, <laughs> yeah, no, Lee was there. Wow. Uh, so we, we just ran around. We were just, you know, taking pictures with fans and high fiving. It was, it was marvelous. So yeah, thanks for having me, uh, jump into your uh, picture there jason it was it was good times like i just could i was overwhelmed that average it was a feeding off of the energy of the person next to you yeah, it yeah. was all consuming that's pretty cool so give us the we're going to start with your game day experience because i didn't get to be there and i had crazy fear of missing out fomo and i did miss out and i'm I, so my fear came true seeing your pictures and Kimmick's pictures and just everybody's pictures, Alyssa's pictures, everybody was just having a freaking blast. So give us, yeah, start to finish. I, I threw the covers off in the morning. What happened from there, from there on out? Yeah. So I'm like trying to figure out uh, how to get to the game, right? You don't want a rental car, the parking, everything like that. So I'm chatting with Kimmick and she's like, yeah, I got to go down. You know, I'm setting it up this week. And I said, what time are you leaving? She says, oh, I'm going to leave around 1, 1.30. And I'm like, oh, my God, the game doesn't kick off till 8. Are you kidding me? <laughs> the, the only thing holding me back was just fear of the cold. Yeah, you know, yeah I'm yeah. a desert rat now, man. I mean, I, I got scales like a lizard out here. So I begged off, Kimmick, I'm sorry. I should have gone with you because in <laughs> retrospect, when I got down there, uh, I, I first I went to e Iman's uh, tailgate and then I bounced over to the tree to I, and the guys just it's just a group of people adopted me over there. So I ended up in a trailer there, you know, um, just chatting with everybody, having a freaking fantastic time. Sure, sure. And then I headed over to uh, Bill's Mafia Babes and uh, hung out with them. And then I started getting a call from Jeremy. I had to go do my autograph signing. And it was at that moment when I realized should have come with Kimmick because <laughs> I missed out on like an hour and a half and I was just soaking it in, man. It was yeah, yeah. electrifying. Now yeah. I'll say this probably wasn't as thick with tailgaters as it is in September. A few people oh, for sure. off, but yeah. the hardcore folks that were there, they were ready and it was on. That's sweet. That's sweet. Yeah. So I, I actually tweeted that uh, what, I, and I'm just confirming because I was guessing it six degrees, four degrees feels like minus whatever that when you breathe in, it was freeze the, the, the snot in your nostrils cold. Is that how cold it was? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had nostril warmers though. So it was like <laughs> battery powered. And for my nostrils, I got like the triple X size. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was it was hilariously cold here. So, you know, I'm, I want to be on social media, you know, posting yeah, yeah. here and there. So I got my phone and it, I went outside for a while and I just put the phone in my uh, ski jacket pocket. But it doesn't have like an insulated layer to the outside. Oh, no. I pull my phone out and it won't turn on. It was so cold. The phone just tur kept turning off on me. <laughs> I, I had to cram it down my pants. Oh, easy. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a family show. <laughs> this is a family show. Oh, so then of course we're in the suite, right? And you know the no, no, no. Are... You got to the suite too early. Something happened before oh, the suite. What do you mean? Weren't you down on the field? Or did oh you go to the suite? Oh my god, first? I totally forgot about that. So that was right. so wild, right? So Jeremy's like getting us all ready. All right, we're going out to the field now, fellas. And it's this long walk all the way to get down to the tunnel, and we're on the field. And it just I took the I took that quick video. If you guys saw it on twitter living your I best grabbed life. my phone zipped yes. around and everybody's got their phones out it's all lit up man it yeah. was like it, it was like being at a rock concert and then of course yeah. i'm there with daryl and jim and squatty and i mean it was it was just such a great feeling will wolford was there and oh wow it was it was fantastic and then of course you know jim and thurman do the hype you know what uh, the song yeah and hey, the crowd hey, hey, starts yeah. echoing it and you could 
feel it. Like the voices from the stands were like rippling through your rib cage. It was insane. I mean, I was so jacked up. So then we were like supposed to go in. I told Jeremy, no, man, I'm standing behind the, the goalposts because I'm going to catch it if it goes long. So I'm like, I'm, not, I'm like right here like this. It was a great experience. And I got, um, so Thurman was kind enough to sign his jersey for a buddy of mine. But what was really wild is I'm thinking to myself, I'm not going to carry this jersey around. Mm, mm. So I wore Thurman's jersey. It's the first time I've ever worn anyone's jersey other than really? my own. Yeah. So I'm like, pull, I'm opening it up like I'm Superman. I'm just like, like that, the big 34 <laughs> popping out. I don't know, man. It was like chimerical powers right there or something. That's awesome. So that's that had to be sweet. So who who all was in the suite with you? So I know that Thurman, excuse me, Bruce obviously was there. Daryl Talley was there. We don't know that Lee Evans was there. Was Ky- I think you texted me, told me Kyle Brandt was in your suite, correct? Kyle Brandt was in our suite. Um, Adam Lingner was in our suite. Really? Uh, Will one of the guys said, you know, I bought tickets. I didn't know we were going to have a suite, so they went out there with Fitzgerald. Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited. I can't even remember who's who. I don't even know so, my own middle name. That's an interesting kind of like not what's the word I'm looking for. That's interest that's an interesting situation when you talk about you guys all being there and all that group of Hall of Famers there and then Kyle Brandt. So who got starstruck? Was Kyle Brandt like like look at all you guys? No, I think, or were you I guys think all he, like that's Kyle Brandt? I, I think it was I think I'm just starstruck anytime I'm around Daryl Talley. So <laughs> Um, I don't think Kyle was a, you know, it was, it was, it's a really wild thing though. So you get a bunch of old football players, these legends in the suite and at the snap of every play, you can look at all their faces and like between Daryl and Bruce and Lee, it's like an examine You could just see him right, doing the right. same. I do it all the time. Right. And I'm like, right. Oh my God. I'm, it's like being in a room with a bunch of nerds. Check this out. This is wild. Hey, how about that? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> speaking of the devil yeah man that's my my man jeremy kelly the you know, director of alumni relations at for the buffalo bills who just is always taking great care of us and you know he's one of the guys that brought me back into the fold along with marlon kerner and jeremy thank you I, I, i'm going on and on about everything and i know you don't want the pub or anything like that but jeremy literally spends his entire day making sure everything works right players are engaged and, uh, you know, he's he's the go-to. He is the he, go-to guy. So talk to us about the game day experience in the uh, – just in the suite itself. So touchdowns, obviously, what's going on. What, you know, from – because where, – where, where, so where, Bill sideline, visitor sideline, which sideline were you on? So we're a uh, visitor sideline. Visitor sideline, um, tunnel on zone or other tunnel. side? Tunnel. Tunnel. So, so you, you were there for the, walked, the, the if high If you walked pick. through the tunnel and you looked – no, no, that was on the opposite end. Was it? Yeah, I was catty corner to where we I were. They were going that way. I thought they were going yeah. this way across the screen. But go ahead. Mm-mm. No, no. So, um, yeah, you might be right. Anyway, regardless, you came out the tunnel. You're stepping on the field. Look up to the right, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. we were in that first uh, deck right there. I guess gotcha. we were probably, you know, seven yards deep in the end zone. That's which, sweet. by the way, brings its own set of problems for these old eyes and the way you, I want to watch football. <laughs> That's why I had to go back and watch the game today because I feel like I I feel like I only experienced the game, right, 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 but didn't watch it like the way I watch it. Right, very good. We got our first super chat, by the way, everybody that that is tuned in. If you've got a question for John, if you want to ask him a question, if you've got a comment for us, please do us a favor. Feel free to super chat us, just like you see John DeFazio did here. John comes in and says, John, what was the guys '90s boys saying about the team as they watched the game? Uh, how impressed are they with this team compared to their team? I mean, you just the words coming out of their mouths, just how they're destroying them, you know, just stacking them up and stopping the run. Mm. I mean, the high fives, the exhilaration, the screaming, the voices. I mean, it would you could have taken these guys and put them right down there in whatever section you were sitting in, <laughs> you on the you on the pod right now, and they they would have been the same. I That's mean, awesome. it was it was the only thing we don't do is we don't you know scream at the top of our lungs before the snap, right, trying to right. go get an offsides penalty going. But uh, they they were they they were just so complimentary of uh, between Devin Singletary, Josh Allen, uh, Matt Milano, and I mean, I mean Poyer, Poyer and Hyde. Come on, yeah. come yeah, on. Yeah, it's it, it's interesting because when you, just when you when you think about that group in that room watching that game and just 
you can only imagine. And I remember, I don't remember who it was. It was, uh, oh, it was Nick Geary. I believe Nick Geary is the first one that tweeted out that uh, that Ryan Fitzpatrick was at the stadium with friends and it like just that he was there taking in the football game. That's all we heard at first. And then the so pictures cool. came out of him shirtless. Yeah. <laughs> and let, I, me, let, me, let me finish part two of that question, though. But okay. by the way, that's awesome because we are fans. But, you know, I could tell like there's an acceptance uh, from Bruce and Daryl and you know, Lee Evans and the rest of the guys like, well, Lee wasn't a nineties guy, but you know, like, okay. Uh, they, they talk about the next play and the last play mm -hmm. as if that, that they can win all the plays, right. You know, like our expectation of you is to replicate the kind of things that we did because the pieces are there. It's good. Uh, what I was going to say just about Fitz, Fitzpatrick was, was when the report came out that he was at the game. I was, I was, I think I tweeted. So does Ryan Fitzpatrick take in a game that we do? Like, is he going to cheer and lose his mind and be loud and be a fan? <laughs> and there was, it was kind of quiet. And then it was, I think it was the next day or later that night, like all the pictures of him sh surfaced shirtless. And then <sighs> the stuff, and then the stuff today where like there's video of him screaming just as far yeah. as like just go, losing his mind at the football game. And it's just, yeah. Like, well, my voice just came back and I, Really, I was only outside cheering with the rest of the Bills Mafia for one quarter of the game. Mm -hmm. And I'm just getting my voice back. It's still yeah, a little scratchy. Yeah. And yeah. it was it was fantastic. That's awesome. Got in the super chat from uh, John. It's, it's the night of John's. John Fina, uh, John DeFazio, John Spaschak. So from John Spaschak, who is the market dominator, who is the sponsor of a couple of my shows. It's uh, good to see you, John. Welcome into the show. John asks, was the ground, the ground on the field frozen? Now, I know that they were heating the field throughout the day, that it was covered and they were heating it. By the time you got to the field, was it frozen already? Yeah, I think that whole heating of the field thing was like a hollow gesture because that <laughs> it didn't take long out there, man. Like when I got to the tailgate, I asked Iman, hey, what's the temperature? He says, it's 12 degrees. I said, well, it's twice as warm as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. But then by the time the sun went down and there was that, what, seven mile an hour breeze, I mean, even when we were on the field, you could you can feel the stiffness, you know, and you can you weren't really able to hear it. But, you know, that sensation of something giving and sort of cracking a little bit as it does kind of goes yeah. up through your foot and you're like wow this is uh at least this turf is better than the garbage we played on oh, back yeah. in the day. concrete yeah. with indoor outdoor green carpet is all that was i mean oh, it's lord i couldn't i don't even know how you guys are still walking which is unbelievable so you're where you guys were uh in the end zone seven yard line or seven rows deep or whatever you said in the end zone you're basically below my seat so i'm at 313 row one which is on the 27 yard line where my seats are so you would have been caddy corner just below me which is yeah fantastic those are i, I love my seats but uh, i can't channel. wait to go to a game with you joe let's go well now you're committed everybody heard you <laughs> now you're committed uh I, oh, you love on. it okay go. let's let's talk to eric farrell if we lose mitchell to another team please please let's sign fitz magic as our backup whatever the about, price he's talking yeah, about yeah He's yeah, about, uh, yeah, yeah. Chip. I think just as a hype man alone, it'd be worth it, right? I mean, could you imagine him being out there with Jim and Thurman shirtless, getting the crowd going? That would be amazing. Insane. <laughs> what I was going to say is, my seats being row one, I've got a I've got an aisle in front of me as well that's about I don't know a couple feet deep. So for you and those gigantic legs you got, you'd be good to go. Uh, just leg shaming. <laughs> I wish I had them. I have a short inseam. Not if you had to buy pants. You know how hard it is to buy pants? <laughs> I got a 32-inch inseam. My wife is 5'8". She's got the same inseam I have, but she's got long legs. But uh, uh, that's a whole conversation for another day. So any other anything else from the suite as far as game-wise before we kind of start getting into our expectations and doing the normal yeah. routine? This has been a blast just hearing yeah. you, your take yeah. on the game. Well, I also did, I didn't met so many guys I didn't mention, but Eric Wood. You know, he and I have this Jersey connection thing. Yep, yep. And we're always like, no, you're the best 70. No, you are. <laughs> no, you are. I love Eric. He's so cool. He's a good I mean, dude. such such a down-to-earth guy. But, yeah, I spent some time with him. So, oh, yeah, all right. So I might have uh, stocked up on enough beef on whack to make it through to September in the suite. Yeah. <laughs> uh, not proud. Not at all proud. And the champagne, it was – it was cold and lovely. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, it, it was. They really took care of us. Oh, and I got to eat only flats again, which I nice. love. 
Nice. Only flats. Nice. Nice. It was great. It was, and we had the most wonderful gal working in our suite, and um, she was hilarious because she's just kind of like laughing at us a little bit at the same time. You look over and she's giggling because she's seeing the way Daryl and and Bruce and everybody are kind of interacting, and it was uh, it was pretty amazing. That's awesome. So let's let's do it. Let's get into this football game. Um, I'll start and say thoughts on the game. I don't even. I, I think I'm still in a in a in a state of euphoria and shock. You know, you. I do these prediction shows, the time to shine, and we've got people on the Hump Day Hotline, and even you sometimes ask people what they think is going to happen, or predictions, or this, that, or the other thing, and people throw out there forty two to ten and forty seven to fifteen and all these numbers, and in the back of your mind, you're like, that'd be great. But even when it you even when it is great and they end up scoring forty five points, it's never like that. Like th- that that game, there is no expectation that that game meets. It's beyond. It almost puts you in a world of, uh, I don't know what the word I don't know what the word I want to use is where it, it it's a it fools you because now has has the mafia's expectation risen to the point where that's what we expect every game that every time they touch the ball they're going to go on and score a touchdown easily because that's obviously not going to be true. So I want this every game. That's my thoughts on the game. I, you know, I was nervous. Yeah. I was nervous going in. I thought the Patriots were going to run the ball a lot. I thought because that's all they can do. I mm-hmm. thought they were going to run 200, 250 yards, and it wouldn't matter. I thought they'd put 200 to 250 yards on us and still lose. I thought that for sure that they were going to keep the ball out of Mac Jones' hands, that they were not going to let him throw it, but they did, to my surprise. Um, but, man, it's it, – it, it, Well, hey, let, let's deal with that Mac Jones thing real quick. I mean, those, those picks weren't his fault. I mean, those were incredible plays by our defenders. Micah yeah. Hyde covering the ground that he covered and oh, elevating. Unbelievable. The throw wasn't great. The throw was a little bit short, uh, no question about that. But then Matt Milano elevating, just getting that tip for Levi Wallace. Yep, you know, yep. I don't blame uh, I don't blame McAdoodle Jones for that at all. McCorkle, frankly. Um, His, but you know my thoughts was... on the game, I, I really expected more from them. And as I was watching the replay, you mean the Patriots? Um, you expected more from the Patriots? Correct. Okay. No, I expected more from the Bills. I wanted <laughs> nine <laughs> scoring drives. <laughs> wow. I needed I needed three fumble recoveries. Their short one interception. I like things to be mm. even. I was like, John, you call me negative, and you wanted more from the Bills? Come on now. <laughs> uh, I always want more from my beloved Bills. Always. Um, wow. And, you know, I did. And then when I, like I was saying, I went back and looked at it. They were a defeated team in the first, after the first drive of the third yeah. quarter, and they yeah. played like it too. And that was, that's going to be something that Bill is not going to be pleased about. There was an effort level that was missing. For sure. You know, they were out, they were, I don't know if they were out game planned, they were out play called, they were out gunned, but they were definitely out hyped by a bunch of players on the field too. And you know how I, I mean, I'm not Mr. Negative like uh, Joseph Miller III, but I do have a tendency to find errors and mistakes. Right, and right. I really tried. And I, I honestly, up front, because that's where my expertise lies, right. I really only found one error in the, in the blocking. And I, I Honestly, it was it was the only one that was obvious to me. Yeah. And often you see obvious things. So takes on the game. I did not expect this. Yeah. I expected, you know, maybe 27, 17 Bills yep. win. Uh, I expected way more from um, New England. It seemed like, and I was at 24-10. That was my prediction for this game. It seemed like once the Bills established that you're not going to run on us, the Patriot, it almost it almost deflated the Patriot, th- their actual players. It almost deflated what they wanted to do. Like they knew that they weren't going to be able to do what it is that they normally do. And they put the ball in McCorkle's hands a little bit. And I'll be honest, I was impressed with some of the passes he threw. Now we were playing up, to, I'm guessing we were playing a lot of tight. You know, they were determined to stop the run, which left some things open. But I was impressed with him. But it, to your point, it, it did seem to suck the life by the third, the third series for sure. The third touchdown, they were they were out of it. How does that from a player? You're in a box full of players, and all of you are getting that feeling that these guys have given up. What what? It, how do you rebound from that? Like, how does a player? If is it does it just turn into this is over, or is there is there a way to? I mean, I don't know. I don't even know. Yeah. I don't even know the question I'm asking. That's a yeah. weird thing for me to to sense that. Well, what you're talking about is does the demoralization on the scoreboard that. trickle into one's body? Yes. And 
(laughs) that scoreboard definitely causes demoralization (laughs) to trickle into the body. And you're right too. I don't think Mac Jones played poorly. I don't, I don't know if he's the guy, I don't know. He, he definitely needs some further development, but by and large, I mean, he didn't do stupid things. He didn't embarrass himself. He didn't embarrass his team. They just came up against a juggernaut. Yeah. Uh, and it, all the stars aligned. You know, we pray, hope that it that it all aligns again next week and the week thereafter. Yes. And the week thereafter. We do. But <laughs> you don't know when, you know, when the lightning's going to strike and how how long and hard you can harness it. And yeah. it was just brilliant to see it. Before I throw Brian Bowers, uh, your wonderful daughter's in the room as well. So Yay! Mimi Fina, <laughs> ASU Women's Rugby. Oh, uh, man. If you guys want to sponsor asu women's rugby club team please do so yeah um mimi i'm feeling great this victory monday how you feeling kid we're we're giddy over here on the off tackle with john fina show so uh brian bowers in with the super chat to hear that some analysts actually picked the pats to win as a as if mccorkle was going to come into that stadium in front of that crowd and be successful ha he says i don't know who the f they thought he was which is going back to josh allen screaming into their locker room (laughs) i don't know who the f you thought i was but uh that's that's not a question that's a statement and a good one it is we've got another one from triggs if casey let allen hang around they're uh, they're in big trouble so speak to that i mean this this game coming up the the kansas city i don't want to get there this early but we're gonna triggs you drew you drew us in too soon um Suck us in, triggs. Exactly, exactly um real quick before we talk about it later the kansas city defense is suspect they've been suspect all season so there's there's an expectation that this might be a shootout potentially between mahomes and allen but if it goes that way, what are your quick thoughts before we get into that game? Just Allen versus that defense. I'm not so much worried about what Josh and the offense can do against Kansas City. My concern is getting the ball back into his hands. You know, we got the number one defense, mm-hmm. right? But Tennessee's film does not look great for us. Neither does Indy, right? So if they bring a good running game, you know, that's that's where our issues are, are going to really sure be a problem Uh, I I think we can dial in on the pass game I think between Milano and Edmonds and on the way our secondary is playing right now we need to get some stops against them and beyond that I think uh I believe that we'll be game planning well enough for uh Josh Allen I I think Mm. um Stefan Diggs in particular I mean the iconic photo of him and his abject disappointment after the game I, I I mean what do you do though? You try to stop Stefan Diggs, a whole host of other guys shows up. The mm-hmm. ball was spread around beautifully. Dawson Knox is playing uh out of his head right now. Yep, yep. And I think that really bodes well for us, but we need stops. We need defensive stops. It's funny. We're gonna transition to the good from the game. It, it, this is gonna be a weird show. I, I'm reminded of because what were the expectations? How did I mean that game exceeded every expectation you could possibly have. It'd be, it'd no. be almost, we didn't have a, a show after the Jaguars game, and we'd be in a similar situation, just the complete opposite. Like, how do you talk about expectations when the team didn't show up? This time, the team just destroyed them. But as we transition over to the good, I'm going to let you go first. The good from this game that stood out to you. Okay, so if you go back and look at the season, we talked about this a little bit here and there, that maybe we were a little flat. Like, mm. we didn't seem to have the energy. Yeah. Um, you know, Feliciano historically on offense was your instigator the guy that got everybody's blood up uh spencer brown seems Mm. to be taking on that role beautifully yep yep. but i noticed that it it, it, call it the playoffs call it whatever the hell you want to call it but it was it was an energy between the players that they were feeding off of brought the atmosphere from the bills mafia and the stadium but the players took it and and just it sank into them the trick and the rub is going to be right. how how do you replicate that in Kansas City mm. at an away game, hostile environment. Right. But if if they can get that hype going, if they can build it up and start fast, you know that's good. I mean, they did good things. One of the, vous. On, on, one of the good things for me in this football game was the and I, I've talked about it a lot. I talked Cheers, about brother. it. I've talked about it uh, last year into the playoffs. I've talked. What's the matter? It's a two beer pod. I'm yeah, using got, a one the, beer pod. I'm on my second as well. So you uh, talk to me. What's your good? Just, I'm I'm getting to it. My my greatest fear is always this concept, this idea from head coaches and coaching staffs 
that now that we're in the playoffs, whether it's hockey or baseball or football, that things are different because now it's it's the playoffs. It's serious. Mm-hmm. Got, it's it's the playoffs. And I think what what I was most encouraged about from this football game was when they were up three scores, when they were up four touchdowns, they didn't. They were still throwing the ball deep. They were still tr- going after them, which to me speaks to the level of no, no, no. We're in it. We're in mm-hmm. it to win this. We're not in it to protect it and play safe and just come out with a win. We're in it. We're in it. We're in this right now. So yeah. that to me was the most encouraging thing that I saw from the game. I loved what I saw from the offensive line. The amount of pulling and guys running free and big guys, big boys running free in space was absolutely incredible. Uh, that one play is stuck in my head. Isaiah McKenzie just holding onto the hip of uh, was it Mitch Morris holding on the hip of Mitch Morris and Mitch Morris is doing his best just to you know sprint and run as fast as he can with Isaiah McKenzie. There was just, I love that. And you actually, because I said that this is during the game, was it during the game or after, that this is no longer a wide zone team, at least it never was, and I don't think they should do it. You, you were going to challenge me, you said, and go back and look. So what did we see more of, pin and pull or wide zone in that game? Uh, no, there, we didn't run a lot of zone. We ran some inside zone, uh, in particular on uh, I think one of Devin's touchdowns. But we mm. <clears throat> used pin and pull, I guess. I I, I call it angle blocking. But we fine, ran yeah. a combination of power and sweep pull. So it's a replacement. Uh, you're you're. <clears throat> it's not really like the the big plays that you're talking about really aren't pin and pull. They're just pull. Yeah, yeah, we have we have one guy usually blocking down on the nose guard, and then we're pulling from the backside. But it's not in the spirit. We did run some pin and pull in the form of power with the backside guard and Gilliam, who had some beautiful blocks. But I want I want to go back real quick and and just give you a story. I don't think I've you know you and I talk all the time offline. Mm-hmm. I call you when I'm on long drives because I'm bored, <laughs> and you're awesome. And uh, <clears throat> so you you said something that is totally wrong. Uh Oh, and you're not even going to believe it because I didn't believe it either. So my rookie year, right? It's my rookie year. I don't know anything. I'm a complete neophyte (laughs) and we get to down to the end of the season and I'm just listening to all these guys talk about the first playoff game Mm -hmm. and Ken Hall, I think it was like, you ain't seen nothing yet. It steps up in the playoffs. And I'm like, what? Like, how can you go above 11? I thought we were already at 11. I'm exhausted. I can't believe, like, we're in, in this thing, you know, 17 weeks, by week 16 games. And I, I don't think I have an ounce of energy left. And you're telling me it's going to go up here. He's like, you don't believe it, but you're going to see it. And it is absolutely true. You, you think you can't dial it up anymore, right. that the receiver, the amplifier won't go up. And it does. And it's it is. Higher. It's an incredible thing to witness and be a part of. That's incredible. That's a great story. Uh, oh, we got two of them. I clicked on the wrong one. Another super chat from Mark Cardenas. Uh, do we have the speed this year in the playoffs to go against this KC team on defense and in turn offense also? I'm going to let you take that one. Did the Bills, they beat them once already this year. Do the, How do they yeah. match up in your opinion? So look, I mean, it's really hard to defend against, uh, is it, Kelsey and Tyreek Hill and who's the third third threat um the name escapes me at the moment be, mostly because they're fast they're savvy they're smart and the game is in slow motion for them right 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 they got a quarterback who can evade trouble who can make very nice throws to me it's not about the speed it's about the discipline mm. it's mm. about the ability of our corners sticking at the right time and exploding off the brakes uh, and it's going to be it's tough. It's grass, I right? Mean, right? Right? It is. It's good. That's a tough haul for uh, a field turf team. Uh, that always concerns me. It always concerns me. But if we can do those things, I think we're in really good shape. Separation. So I don't. I don't have any concerns about our offensive speed. Um, I do think, obviously, I, I don't believe, despite Matthew Judon, that New England was an extremely threatening team with their right. front four or five or six coming. Uh, but I think Kansas city's different and yeah. they, they got a bigger body in the middle and they got, uh, I think they got stronger ends. So if we can protect, I don't have a concern that Beasley digs um, whoever's up this week is going to get open. We've got to get them the ball. Yeah. Do you, I'm gonna, so I'm going to rabbit trail because you talked about the field grass versus field turf. Have you played on field turf? Uh, yeah. Okay, times. so I've been on the Bills field, 
And so I was, you know, I've been a season ticket holder when the old field was there. And then when they installed field turf the first time and I thought it looked great. I remember going, I remember the first time we went and it's like, that looks like real grass. Like that's how we felt from the stands. Um, and then they talked about that. It re- feels more like grass and blah, 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 blah. Well, this past summer for, for w- the wing fest uh, in Buffalo that they had at the stadium, I got to go down on the field. And when I stepped down it, I was like, this doesn't feel like real grass to me. Like grass has a significantly different feel. It wasn't obviously what it was indoor outdoor carpet on concrete with no pad. That was ridiculous. That's like running on a, a, at a gymnasium. I remember when I was in, in, in college in Springfield, Missouri, I went to Evangel University and SMSU was down the street and we used to sneak over there at night and play football on their football field because they had like uh like the, the track was open but and then they had just lights on just normal lights security lights and we used to play football at night out there and that was like a rubber compound a soft rubber compound which was was weird as well but that it, it felt to me when i was walking on that the field turf that i'd have a hard time running on it running fat it just felt it didn't feel like grass i guess that's how it no i don't so hmm. you know i think the issue in my opinion is inline running and it's not a big trenches issue Mm-hmm. It's really for me. It's more a defensive backs issue, right? Because gotcha. on field turf or whatever they call this garbage, and oh, I shouldn't say that. I think it's a good product. Uh, mm. You know, I, wait. Are they sponsoring the show? It's garbage. No, <laughs> uh, no I love it. Uh, I think it's. I think it's done a lot for the game. The issue to me is you can get away with a little bit more on field turf um, when you're breaking out of you know on a coverage. Sure. So on grass, if you extend your feet too much, you get a natural slide and you don't right. get that burst. So I think, and I don't know. I mean, I'm not a cornerback, clearly, mm-hmm. mostly by my uh, size <laughs> of my shirt right here. But <clears throat> I think you, I think you, it bodes well for you if you're in a position like that where you need to keep your feet more underneath you, come to you know, come out of your break to cover mm-hmm. their break. Mm-hmm. Running backs, you know, depending on the weather. Um, if it's, if it's wet, if you're cut on your inside foot, sometimes you go down, you know, you got to think about cutting on your outside foot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Brooke, yeah, it does. Brooke has a super chat and she says the Cardinals are down 21 to nothing. The, the cards are getting throttled right now by the Rams, mm. uh, five twenty one left to go before halftime. And the chiefs need to be knocked down a peg as well as their fan base. They're more annoying than the Cowboys fan base. Now. Um, I don't know how to respond to that other than true. Right. <laughs> I got to tell you, Brooke, that's a great picture. I mean, that is a beautiful, beautiful equine that you have there. And I, you know what? I, I don't want to win the game because I don't care for a fan base. Um, I think, you know, sadly, there are instances where our own fan base misbehaves a little bit. And, uh, but I get your feelings. So you're a fan like me, and we want to take them down, not just from, the coach and the quarterback position, but all the way down mm. and send the KC fans packing. So super good. Another super chat coming in from Pamela, Pam Adana on Twitter. Think of the super chat. I think we beat Kansas city Sunday, not because of the Pats game. What I see is uh, different from even the beginning of the season is Josh's confidence level. The past four weeks, he's there. I want to build off of this because another mm. part of the good that I saw in this game, the bills went from being, a non-existent screen team beginning of the season and even last season to they're trying to run screens with two left feet and and two left thumbs or a handful of of thumbs, like really just falling all over themselves and people not knowing which way to go to executing beautiful screens with pulling linemen in this football game. And Josh was very much, I don't need to throw the ball 25 yards on the field. I'm going to throw it to that guy right there and get seven. And that to me was great. He did, he did. He threw some nice outlet passes. Thanks, Pam, for the uh, the question there, Pam. Adana. Um, yeah, he there was a the, the whole team exuded confidence. Yes. But there was an error about Josh throughout from the beginning of the game of just like, uh, you know, you're settled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you've got your chi, if you will. Yeah. And uh, I think you're right. I think that. Um, even when he's on the run, even when he scrambles, there's that ability. He doesn't look like he's falling down. His head's up. He's looking downfield. He's trying to find the next guy. He just wants to, he wants to turn a bad play into a good play every time. Not that they all don't, Mm -hmm. but some people carry a more, I don't want to say regal demeanor, Mm -hmm. but, um, I think, and he feeds off of that from guys, especially like Stefan Diggs. Yeah, and Triggs comes right back and says, I think it's because he trusts their interior offensive line now. Do you think that there's something to that, his confidence in those guys? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you could argue this up, down, and sideways that if 
you know, if Feliciano doesn't get hurt, does he finally settle in? Do they find their groove? We, we, you know, we've we've got Bates in there now, right? Yeah. So yep. we're happy with it, and it's grooving. So we ju- we just gotta like not ask questions and just go. And I think that that could be part of it. Um, Josh has always been great at eluding traffic anyway. And one of the bigger issues or one of the bigger bonuses is our use of play action is really looking good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can actually jump to a play. And I'm going to jump to the Gabe Davis touchdown, if that's all right. Uh, mm-hmm. Just just because uh, we, we were talking about this one during uh, before we came on the air. And this is just josh allen basically freezing or we what you said sucking up the linebacker so a lot of times we as fans here you know the, the announcers talk about freezing the linebacker or, or sucking them up based off of play action we don't do play action enough or the play action really really worked or they got to run the ball more to get play action to work and blah 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 blah. this is just a great example of that so yeah uh, run the tapes want, yeah, run the tape want, so you want you want to watch 23 i think it's 23 up here in the yep. top left hand corner Yep, right between the B and the I. So sucking up or freezing is what happens to linebackers when you have a competent running game. So Singletary's been running well. Josh Allen, obviously a huge threat in the run. But what you get is you get people peeking. Either they're stepping up hard into the line or they're just sitting and waiting. You know, it's kind of hard. This linebacker is so focused on Singletary and Allen because he wants – he's not a linebacker, actually. He's a safety in this – in the in this uh scheme right now but he's making sure he wants to make sure that neither josh nor devin singletary has the ball so he's not even using any of his peripheral vision so he does it's gabe davis right yep he doesn't see gabe davis floating across right there the shadow coming if he feels that and he is not in stop the run mode chances are he drops about four feet maybe even six feet and this play may not happen or it's intercepted. I think what I like about this play as well is when you see the lineup, when you see him lined up, so you've got Josh Allen, obviously Mitch is in front of him, Mitch Morris, and then Darrell Williams on his right. I love the sell by, oh, by Darrell yeah. Williams on the pull. Like, we're going left with this, and we're going left hard, and he smashes that linebacker right there, yep. and then the ball comes out. So that's an RPO, clearly, right? Run, run no, 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 no. This is a design pass. They're ne- oh, really? they were never going to hand this ball off. It looks like an RPO just because of, totally of the stance. Does. Yeah, it, it does. But I'm telling yeah. you, this was a pass all the way. Gotcha. Because honestly, RPO, your first option is run. You're going to take the run, and the run is open. Why wouldn't he give it? Gotcha. Right? What's interesting is Allen is focused. He never takes his eyes off that safety. Look at him. He's looking yeah. at the safety right there. Right there, all the way through it, and then he hits Gabe Davis behind him. It was a brilliant play. Yeah, super, super good, super good. So, uh, the next one that we're going to look at is the uh, jo- what, the Josh Allen sweep. Um, so, I don't know if you want to set this up real quick. Yeah, I mean this this is pretty wild. Okay, so the the guy that makes the play initially here is Daryl Williams. I mean, he's really big. he's going against a four technique, and what does that mean? That means the guy with his hand on the ground between he and Spencer Brown is super wide. He's almost on Spencer's shoulder. And if this is the right play, and I'm, I'm an IPA deep already. <laughs> what, what Williams does here is he sells to get a hook. And this is an incredibly hard block to make because you're moving out in space. You need to hook this guy to set the edge. And then beyond that, everybody else then has to pick up a block. And it, 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 it's executed beautifully. Later on, Dawkins does it on the left. But you see this full sell. So we talk all the time, like, is it pin and pull? Or is it zone? If you stop the film right here like you did, this yeah. is zone. This is 100% zone. Right, right. Okay? And you, it's, and you, you can identify that because they're all moving together, right? They're all moving together. But the hook by Williams is just – it's a, Right there. Yeah, and that defensive end, uh, defensive tackle, that's ghastly. I mean, he's, like, he better never watch this film. He's like, dude, you you were in a four technique and you got hooked. That's awful. Like Dawson literally, Knox. Is, it, is like, that Dawson Knox or Kumaro? I can't tell. It's Knox on the right hand side, but they're both. But what's interesting is that within four frames, probably four frames of this video, he goes from that position of running, sprinting to his right, to mm-hmm. completely turn and and block them out. But this was a great. It was just, and then obviously Josh yeah. makes that guy miss at the end. Makes the guy miss. Dawson Knox blocked very well in this football game. I mean truly did a nice job super good got a super chat and it's uh, right here with kind of what we're talking about john you meant this is from eric farrell john you mentioned play action i really think it looks great out of heavy formations please speak about play action in heavy formations 
Hmm. Well, you know, I mean, heavy only works if they're going to substitute with you, right? If in basketball, if you put your tall guys in, they put their tall guys in. But what if they don't? So if by some circumstances you running play action out of heavy and they don't bring in a linebacker or to at least don't play in it with a with a nasty position safety walking straight up and making it look like a seven man front, then you've reduced. I mean, OK, the tight ends can catch a ball. We saw that, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, we caught one with the big guy, 72. Uh, <laughs> then, then you're reducing the amount of weapons that you have. And I, 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 I'm saying that's a good play, third and two, right? Fourth and one, uh, third and three, maybe. But I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, we are not run heavy enough uh, and, and enough of a run threat, I think, to pull that off on a regular basis. Yep. Let's uh so let's do the uh the the Devin Singletary pitch out play because mm -hmm. the Bills don't run and it's a reverse pitch out, right? So they're pitching it out to the backside. And we talked about this. I don't remember if we talked about it against us or if we saw the Bills do it, but this time it was executed well. Um, well, again, uh, Dawkins did the same thing that Williams did on the previous play that we watched. Right there. I mean, he skates and pins. Beautiful. Now we it, you think it's pin and pull. I mean, one guy's blocking down, which is Bates on the nose, and and then you've got Morse just running out in space, right? I look at these plays, and there's really nothing to tell the defense that this is going to go the opposite direction other than protecting against Josh's bootleg. So yeah. it's, it's just incredibly well blocked up front. It It's not really chicanery, but it is uh, it, – it's – I look at this, and I'm like – why does this play succeed? I mean, it, and this is what we would, we talked about last week when, you know, you got, you got four guys doing it right on one play and three and a half on the next. But in this game, by and large, we had five guys blocking uh, successfully right. on every play. What I but, love about this is Devin Singletary's recognition of where Morse is about to be and totally. then cutting, cutting inside of him this right, pause there. right there yep. was great. And yep. it, was, it wasn't the cut. It was the setup, right? Because he didn't know at that point if, if Morse was going to get a kick out right. or if he was going to get a hook. Turns into a hook, but because Singletary's hips are starting to head downfield, right. he's able to make those sweet little jump cut on those, you know, 26 inch inseam pants. <laughs> <laughs> that's hysterical last one we'll do is uh devin singletary up the middle and there wasn't a lot to this it was just it was just a, a fun play I, we've talked a lot about what's the, fat, the quickest way you know from point a to point b straight line so going straight at the middle which the bills have not been good at this year but in this game it worked so, well before you even start stop right there so yep. i looked at this play and i want to like, all right joe picked this play why should i want to watch this play but what you have to understand here is that the the trickiest two blocks on the play are mitch morse and Dawson Knox. Mm -hmm. And Mitch has got the job where he needs to invite the defensive lineman to go outside. And you have to do it in such a way that it's not obvious. Right. I know this is a, you're like, what are you talking about? But you literally have to give enough of a soft left shoulder here to let that, that shade think he has a chance to go upfield on you and pass. Right. And Morris does just a brilliant job. But look at the position of Dawson Knox with the linebacker that he's going to come block. And that that's a good linebacker. Is that Dante? Um, uh, Hightower? Hightower? No, Hightower's 54 right here. That might be Calvin. No, I'm not sure. All right. So you, you're out, totally out leveraged if you are Dawson Knox right now. So the, the angle he takes to get flat and then stalk block, and that's S-T-A-L-K. Mm -hmm. That's how you found your wife. You stalked her. Yeah, true. So he stalks the linebacker. But he gets his hips into the right position, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't blow him up. He just shields him and then takes him wherever he wants to go. And, again, as long as you get four yards on every running play, John Fina's happy, and we all sure. know that's all sure. that really counts. But there he is. Look at that. Great job by Dawson Knox. Morris doesn't win the block so much as he does just a guy get the guy to go upfield enough. Right, right, right. Just enough. It was just great um, to see them opening holes like that up the middle. I mean, it's just it's it was. I that's, found my, and that's old school, old fashioned draw. We I, we just don't see enough of this. You know, it's weird. That's the, the, that's, the, the that, that's the Thurman Thomas play right there. Jim Kelly and Thurman Thomas exactly, made a living on the, the evolution of the game 
hey, we've gotten away from some of these sort of like student body right with two guys pulling and a jump yep. hook on the outside, and we haven't seen a lot of power. And it's sort of all kind of evolving back, and it's it's cool. I mean, Jim, Jim never did the fake pump, the fake pass, but that tuck inside of Thurman Thomas, he did. He made a living on that play. Made yeah, a also a great block by Bates. I mean, terrific. So fantastic. I do have Star Latulale sack. I don't know. Do you want to go through that just defense real quick? Yeah, I mean, I don't know what the center was doing on this play. I mean, if you look at it right now, everybody's sliding to the left. We used to call this Viking left. That means right guard, center, left guard, left tackle. We're going to take those four guys, and we're going to let the right tackle either read the two, the linebacker, Edmonds, or the defensive end, probably Hughes or Rousseau in this instance, right? Yep, yep. Or, or the tackle takes the end, and the running back has the linebacker. But what I can't figure out for the life of me is Matt Milano doesn't come and the center vacates. So he initially starts with his hand up, which is the right technique. But when Milano drops, and if you the position that Starla Tulele is in, the most vulnerable guy is the right guard here. So the right guard's got to come on a full slide. And in my mind right now, I'm thinking uh, the right guard thinks he's getting more help from the center who shouldn't even, he should be left hand, but not even floating away, but he floats right. to his left. Right. It should be a double team there and a late reaction to help when Milano comes, if he comes. Milano doesn't come. The, the right guard's going back to the sideline right now, and he's doing the Joe Miller. Dude, dude, you <laughs> dude. hung me out to dry. <laughs> Run the tape. Here we go. Right, center moves to his left, puts his right hand up, but doesn't really give any help. The right guard doesn't help himself enough by really jamming like he should have been jamming that inside technique and trying to get his his eyeballs across to the other side but gotcha. he only ends up being almost even for a split second but it, it, it was bad i think clearly another big part of it and it's funny because we watched star latula even early in the season because all eyes were on star at the beginning of the season because we didn't have him last year and the defense wasn't good so there was this expectation well when star comes back like we're going to see why this defense is supposed to be good if stars in it and sure enough we saw star getting triple teamed in like the miami game and stuff like that and in this game this is a well in this play see he's got he's got one guy on him and he just throws him off him and runs right around him just get away well, from me i mean the center and the center goes and runs off for ed oliver like you're some kind of a hero <laughs> rushing a guy who's basically lined up on the tackle i mean i you that you just i mean i don't know maybe the right guard owes him money and uh <laughs> but he hung him out to dry right 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 so we got uh, a couple super chats one from marco danis again when you are on d bill's interior d line is also playing much better than the last meeting with the chiefs harrison oliver when you are on d i don't i, uh, I think yeah. when we're talking about it that's oh, yeah. gotcha. we're on the d right now no question about it um we're, we're getting great play from Harrison, right? And and yeah. he's he's kind of rolling in that position of Star Latulale. What I like is Star had this success with that last sack, and that's going to pump him up. Yeah, I mean, sure. it pumps you up when you get a sack. So, yeah, I do think that – I think that the Chiefs have to be obviously concerned about Ed Oliver. But how are the Bills going to uh, – they're going to need to run some games. If, we, if we're going to rush – uh, Kansas City straight up man to man without running any games when you know with almost like a pin and pull yeah. and and bringing Milano into it yeah. I, I I think it, it'll be I think that would be unwise. I think you're going to see Milano coming quite a bit. Gotcha. Pamela uh, back in with a super chat. Someone said that they are using Singletary more, that's why he looks better. I disagree with that. I don't think it's about volume. So do I. Um, that he was always, or that he was always good, but we didn't use him a lot. I feel like we always have, have used him, but he just hasn't, he's, he just has, I can't speak, but he has just gotten more talented. I don't think it's about talent. What are your thoughts? Yeah. You know, it's so weird. Like, uh, what is it? Is it just the, the ebb and flow and the timing and you want to gel when the playoffs come? I do think, you know, we and we've attacked quite a bit of it. We're, we're not a great zone team, but we're running kind of a wide zone now on a different 
um, thought process with a hook at the tackle. Mm -hmm. And what we're finding is that our tackles are good at doing a jump hook, even when a guy's way out in space. Um, I think Devin still uh, shoulders are more to the line mm -hmm. when he's taking the handoff now than they were initially. Right. Um, but I, God, I, I wish I had all the answers and I, I do have most of them, but just not this one. I have fan questions for you as it pertains to any player in the NFL. The first one is the game slowing down. Now, I would find it hard to believe, <clears throat> excuse me, that it would take three years for the game to slow down for Devin Singletary. However, even inside of saying that, we're, we're seeing guys like Harrison Phillips in his third year coming into his own. He was coming on against the Bengals that, that, that in, uh, was it 19 or 2019? Um, regardless, is is that part of it? Could it and, and then, or is it, like scheme change does it take sometimes longer for guys to settle in on a scheme change what we're trying to what we've changed what we're asking you to do first year to second year now it's different can it sometimes just or is it maybe like i said the game slowing down and he's just seeing things now so yeah yeah so the game does slow down i know that sounds weird right because the game goes a million miles an hour right and when i say it slows down what i mean is you're like Neo in the Matrix. Sure. And the more experience you have and the better uh, student of film, of the opponent's film that you are, you start to recognize patterns. Right, right. And you have you start recognizing where uh, voids are going to be, right? So for Dawson Knox, you know, how this guy plays this technique, where are we on the field, um, and you just, it just becomes more natural. Yeah. So it is a real thing. It is a real thing. And it's, again, it's like you, everybody gets pumped up for the game, but underneath it, you know, there's a still water that sort of is your base right, that right. you hang on to. And as, as you see things, you like, um, here's another expl explanation for it. So the game slowing down means you're looking at something with the expectation that it's going to happen. Sure. And then it does. And then right. you're like, I get it. And then you start seeing more of those things happen. For me, it was always playing sports. Whenever I moved up a level, whenever I was, you know, going in for the first time, it was, I always felt like I had tunnel vision. Like things were very narrow to me. I didn't, my peripherals didn't work at all. Um, and it wasn't about speed as much as it was. I just, my vision was super duper limited. And then as I got comfortable, you know, baseball, for instance, it's the old adage, you know, when curveballs are coming at you, you're supposed to wait. And it's like, what do you mean wait? How do you wait? And you wait for the break. And when the break comes, then you swing. And when you're just coming in for the first time and you've got that tunnel vision, it's, it's, you, there's no waiting. There's no seeing the ball. There's no nothing. It's just swing and miss. That's what you're going to do versus being comfortable and, and, and the vision kind of opening. So I was encapsulated or, or thought of it differently. I always thought about it that way that it's, it's not so much that the game is fast. I know it's fast, but it's just what you can see yeah. is different. Yeah, you're absolutely right. But that only comes with the confidence in the film study and, you know, experience. And right. it, it's a combination, you know, it's a potion, right. little uh, bat swing, urine from a pregnant mare and a cauldron <laughs> with the warlock out there stirring it up. Eric Farrell's, Eric Farrell is back. Motor looks like he's more patient in his runs, letting blocks set up. It's almost like he's been watching Thurman video. Ooh, he got those texts. I didn't realize he got it. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, I, I'm conflicted on this because I think he does better when he chooses and goes. Now, on these long jump hook type zone plays that we're running now, it does behoove him, as we just saw, to allow things to develop a little bit. Yeah, My yeah. concern is that, he, you know, at his stature, the interior runs, uh, he he tries to wait too long, and things just move too fast up front. Even though the guys are, you know, 295, 325, they move like cats, mm. and I can't stand cats. <laughs> you didn't mind my cat when you were over at my house. So it's getting a little stuffy. We normally get to the things that need work, but coming out of this game, there wasn't a whole lot, so we might as well jump a little bit over it. Not that you know every game is perfect. I know I'm sure you could find some stuff, but uh, let's take the last couple minutes of the show to talk about just this Kansas City game, our expectations, what we think we're going to see, um, yeah, and how we feel like this game is going to go. And I just found out today that I'm actually going to have the privilege of going 
Oh. So McKenna and I are going to be, I just booked the flights in the hotel and I got oh tickets. Oh um, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we're going to be at the, at the, at this game. So I'm super excited about that. So what, what I should expe I, expect? I expect you to take a video on the field during intros like I did for you. <laughs> I, wish, I wish dude. And <laughs> like uh, wish. let me know what the legend suite is like. So I don't want to beef on Wex sucks. I got, I got a message that said, Hey, I've got two tickets. Do you want them? Um, and it wasn't from a normal human. It was from a bills player mm -hmm. to which I was like immediately like, yes. And, and, but I don't think, I think that's as far as it's going to go. I don't think that there's going to be an inv invitation for me to come down on the field. Uh, if, no, if I well, they, they typically can't when you go to an away game, we got no, yeah. we got no cred. Yeah. I'm just making a joke that there's no way I'm getting invited down to the no, field, but, uh, right. yeah. So what, what should McKenna and I expect from this football game in your opinion? And, and then I'll give maybe some of my, my expectations. Well, I think by and large, you're going to be surrounded by a bunch of very nice Midwestern Chiefs fans. I think you're going to be treated well. At least that's my hope. And I, I said it because I'm putting that out into the cosmos. Guy with his daughter traveling hundreds of miles. Be nice to Joe and McKenna. <laughs> um, you, you know, you're going to get a lot of hooting and hollering. Just like, just imagine being, you know, a Jets fan in underneath our stadium well i've been to a bills kansas city game in kansas city before that part i, I know what that crowd's going to be like i'm talking about the bills what am i going to give yeah. what should I expect from this football team yeah you know honestly i mean it could go both ways like i think looking at the first quarter and a half of the kansas city game they might feel like they have more to prove right because they didn't play beautiful they didn't play the beautiful mm -mm. game at all mm -mm. and uh despite the outcome i think they feel like wow we, we can't start slow so there there'll be a hype They'll be hyped for them. Yeah. And, you know, they're going to be ready. Um, I think the biggest question is, and it, it's been this team the whole time, slow start, bad finish, right? Mm -hmm. Fast mm -hmm. start, great finish. Right. We got to start both halves. I'm telling you, both halves. The first two drives, we either stop them where we score, and then we stop them or we score, whichever. And then in the second half, same damn thing. And I don't know how you beat the Bills – when they do that i don't yeah for this me, game i don't to me dawson knox uh is going to play a, another pivotal role dawson knox i said in the overreaction show um i think it was last night because i did an extra i did a back-to-back -back episode because there was no sunday game mm -hmm. i feel like dawson knox has the potential to be i think i think so if i think if i think this is what i think i think i think dawson knox is, is how i framed it yesterday has the potential to be a top three tight end in the nfl next year i think that he is becoming he hasn't hit his ceiling yet, and his his body, his catching, his speed, his blocking ability, all that stuff is beginning. So I'm not saying that he's better than George Kittle. I'm not saying that he's better than Mark Andrews. I'm not saying that he's better than Travis Kelsey, who's in his 30s. Mm -hmm. But get, Kittle kind of fell off this year a little bit. Mark Andrews is who Mark Andrews is because he's basically the only guy that Lamar Jackson throws to. I think that Dawson Knox can move into that upper echelon. Probably He's probably top five now. I think he can move into top three. I think he's going to be a, a big part of this game, along with Devin Singletary. And I, I need to see Isaiah McKenzie. I don't need to see Isaiah McKenzie have the bulk of the touches. I don't want him to have more touches than Stephon Diggs. But you watch that defense when he's on the field. Any defense, and they're when he cuts across, or even if he's standing next to Josh Allen, they're clued into what he's doing. They're yeah. watching that guy. Yeah, three carries for what was that twenty six yards or whatever it was. It was it was beautiful. The stat line on our game was incredible. Yes, and I, I look. I won't disagree with you about Dawson Knox, and uh, I'm a Pollyanna guy. I absolutely am a Pollyanna guy. When the Bills draft somebody, I I I, I love the pick. I just <laughs> I, I love the pick. I think it's going to be great. Right. And uh, you know, I like Dawson Knox when they picked him. And you know, I kind of look try to look into the eyes. Is he a thoughtful guy? Yeah. You know, that that to me makes a big difference. I don't know how you draft on thought, but I just did it. Anyway, you know, and people think, oh, well, why would Dawson Knox be successful against Kansas City? They have to practice against Kelsey all the time. That's not really true. You're not really practicing. Your ones aren't really going against Kelsey. Right. Um, some of them are, right? I mean, right. there's only 57 guys out there. You know, sometimes the twos are actually your ones when you're in uh, – that's – Incorrect spelling there, Daniel, but no, we'll get it to you. <laughs> so, uh, you know, can they be prepared for Dawson Knox? I don't know, but I think you go with the fire, right? When you got the hot hand, you keep going to him. Well, he ate him up. Last, he ate him up earlier in the season, whatever that was, week five or week six, when the Bills mm -hmm. played them. He was a nightmare for for the Chiefs. Now the Chiefs were not playing well, and to my own personal credit, I, you know, Pamela called me out and, and blew me up on Twitter about me saying that 
don't throw dirt on the Chiefs yet. They're not done. They were, I think they were four and something. It was their, I said the same was, thing, bro, their, when, their, their, when we talked about it. Yeah, their record this. was awful, and people were like, no, the Chiefs are done. I'm like, ah, and they get, you know, they get the the number two seed. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, this sucks. Why can't they just go they away? They didn't get the number two seed. They, they earned, earned it. The yeah, they earned it. So a big thing that's been sticking out to me coming in, once I learned last night that the Bills were going to be playing the Chiefs, um, because people were talking about that Stefan Diggs part, that picture, uh, whether it was the first one with him with his hands on his helmet, to him just standing there, to the third one of McDermott going back onto the field and hugging him. And what is sticking out to me is your comment, forget the game, remember the feeling. Forget the game, remember the feeling. The problem is, is this is now remember the feeling and remember that game because they're do, they're back. It's 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 here again. This isn't. I don't want to lose because I hate that feeling, so I don't want to lose this team. This is that same team. Yeah, I mean it's set up right. Right. So it it it, it goes back to, if I will, I apologize for cutting you off. You know, your '90s Bills team getting throttled by the Cowboys in the Super Bowl, right? And then the next year, and you guys played significantly better, significantly different in that second game against the Cowboys. You almost won it had it not been for two unfortunate fumbles, one that was returned for a touchdown. The Bills, I thought, I thought we were, I was like, it's over. Like third quarter, we're up. Like I thought it was going to be, I thought we had it. So you can probably speak to that going into that game. What is, what, are the, what's their feeling? Because this isn't regular season. This is now postseason. Listen, I think the leadership in the locker room is really going to just continue to try and, I don't want to say reinvent, but just ignite the feeling that we all witnessed on Saturday night. Right. And if we go in with that, with Stefan Diggs, you know, who seems to be very vocal, and Josh with his chest pumped out, right? Mm -hmm. And in a degree of confidence, whether it's real or faked, and that is so big, mm. you got to fake it. If it, if it ain't there, you fake it until suddenly you get smacked in the face and it and it comes out of you. You yeah. shouldn't really have a hard time getting up for this game. Look, no. um, it all boils down to mistake-free football. Whoever makes the fewest mistakes sure. is going to win this game. Both teams are going to be amped up. I think the Bills will come in with really great energy, and it matters. Yeah, and it yeah. matters. It matters that, you know, the, at, at like four and a half seconds into a play, if you're still maintaining your block or you're still expecting the ball to be thrown your way and you're not, you know, slowing down, whatever. Right. Right. Yeah. It's, 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 I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited and now a little more nervous knowing that I'm going to be there because I can't process. <laughs> I, there, there probably will not be more than likely will not be an overreaction show on Sunday night. So I think that uh, Jay Spence is going to fill in for me. So he's going to oh. he's going to do a special edition of the Code of Conduct on Saturday night just after the game. Yeah, but being there always makes me nervous. Um, I got yeah. You know, I, I tell you, I mean, I there's so much excitement even when I was just at the at the tailgates. It, yeah. it was just building. Your this, first tailgate, the first tailgate of your life, yeah, by the way. Yeah, it really was my first tailgate. It was so <laughs> cool. It was so cool. I get it. I mean, and, and these fans in Buffalo, I mean, just super people. I mean, yeah, who's yeah. coming out in six-degree weather and then staying? You could have gone home at the end of the third quarter, but they didn't. Yeah. I mean, it was awesome. The amazing, was the amazing so thing cool. about that day outside of everything was – Six degrees, four degrees, whatever it was, mm. frigid, freaking frigid. And you were here on Sunday because you headed home Sunday. Dude, I went outside Sunday after church, and it was 29, 30 degrees. The sun was shining. It felt like summer. Oh, so <laughs> was, I was like, what a difference, 30 degrees. Like, I'm going to take my jacket off. It's gorgeous out here. Oh, um, my God. Yeah, but the most amazing thing that could possibly happen, in my opinion, are the Bills winning this weekend and then the Tennessee Titans losing and bring that AFC championship game against the Bengals home to Buffalo. That, to me... Would be Look, the, 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 the keys we've, we've talked about them. I mean, I think that the, the defensive front four has to be active. They yeah, have yeah. got to pick the right gaps. We got to have the right mix of, of pressure off the edge, Milano up the middle. We have to put Mahomes down a couple times. Yes, for sure. Okay, we have to have him try to do one of his throws that everybody seems to gush over, land in the arms of Jordan Poyer. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need that yeah. up front. We got to play like we did the last game. And I, and I hope in that offensive line meeting room, you know, they're approaching the film study of Saturday's game with a, an air of uh, contentment, but hunger. 
Yeah. This is actually, we're going to get out of here right after this comment because this is fantastic, and I did not even correlate this to the game. Daniel Gariz, as it was being discussed between Brian Bowers and Daniel and myself while you were talking earlier, how the actual pronunci- pronunciation of his last name is mm-hmm. Daniel Gariz. Last year the, in the Kansas City playoff game, the Bills wide receivers were all playing hurt or injured. Diggs had the oblique injury. Bees had a broken leg. Davis was all dinged up, and Brown was hurt the whole season. That's a big deal. When you're when your skill guys, your wide, especially for a passing team, when they're all hurt, big, big deal. And then being healthy. This team is abnormally, strangely, awkwardly, awesomely knock on whatever wood you can find around you. Wait, hey, that reminds me. What's healthy. Addison? What's his status? That's a uh, gr- that's a great point, by the way, Dan. Heard I've heard nothing. I heard a from the thigh doctor who's a content creator and is on uh on a different couple different shows, he he assumed it was a shoulder injury, a shoulder separation based on the way he fell on the ground trying to tackle whoever well, Damien Harris good. or whoever it was, so that they popped yeah. it in. But yeah, he can either play with the pain or wait three weeks or something. Have you have you ever had an oblique injury? Do you know where your obliques are? I do know where my obliques are, and I've never had one. So yeah, right over here. So I had I had one. Um, I can't remember what game we, we used to run this draw play where I'd set. I always do this when I set. I'd set on the defensive end and then look like I'm going to lose and throw him upfield and then go run after the linebacker. So I threw and I literally tore an oblique and it looked like a sniper got me from above the 12th man sign and I literally crumbled, Mm. just went to the ground. This, Mm. This pain shooting through my abdomen and I was like, what was that? I like, did I, did my spleen explode? <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, I mean, look, it's, I know it's a family show and everything like that, right, but right, right. for, for a week, I, 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 I didn't laugh. Okay. I didn't cough. I didn't sneeze. And I took tons of stool softeners. Right. Right. I'm telling you <laughs> the pain. I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. I'm like this tiny little muscle and I'm I, I keeled over like I'd been taken out by a sniper. That's amazing. So that's a great point though. Um, that's amazing. So we're, 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 we're healthy and yep. um, we're bringing in a full cadre of weapons. Yep. And it seems like I say this every week, but we are long in the tooth in this show. Great show. You yeah. were great. I'm it just trying to fan- keep up. It's been a fantastic show, and you were great, too. Just hearing the, the, the firsthand game day experience that we didn't get to live through is amazing. So thank you for all of that. Like, literally. Well, thank you for letting me, Bills Mafia, join you for your game day experience yeah. because that was so cool. <laughs> yeah. Any final words before I wrap this up and get us out of here? Yeah, I um, I, I just freaking love it, man. I don't, I don't know. what I'm speechless. It's yeah. just such a great feeling. Yeah, it's it's cool to have you back in the fold. It's cool to have you like to see the fans embrace you. Dude, so were the people crowd with the crowds, people on the sidelines like yelling at you? Hey, Fee, yeah, uh, they were yeah. great. Yeah, they were terrific. And uh, you know, especially at the tailgate, I mean, people were like, "Here's a drink. Here's a rib. Here's some." Oh, yeah. I had some. I okay. I had some elk meat, or was it venison? I can't remember. Some strap. Huh. Oh! I mean, the juice was running down my oh, yeah. finger. Yeah, I was licking sure. my hands. It was six <laughs> degrees outside. I was, I had like uh, elk juice sickles that I was licking off my finger. Oh, no, it's That's much. hysterical. I can't imagine, like, for me to be at a tailgate sitting in a chair and John Fina walks by. Like, if I didn't know you. Uh, well, that's, so that's, that's, that's a funny thing, too, is, you know, I wa- I did the whole thing, the experiment. I see it all the time on on the Twitter box. Like I was at the store today. I saw somebody in Bill's gear. I said, Bill, go Bills. And it didn't say anything. Right. right. So everybody I passed as I walked from place to place, I said, go Bills. <laughs> and I got to go Bills back. And people yeah, most honestly, I'd say 99.5 to 99.9% of people don't recognize me at all. That's funny. That's funny. It's hard to believe. Uh, just anytime you see a giant man, it's like, that's got to be a bill play, a buffalo bill play, <laughs> former, former current. But ladies and gentlemen, it is Victory Monday, heading into Victory Tuesday. It's Victory Week, and uh, we are excited to be going into Kansas City. I believe it's 630 on Sunday for the divisional round of the playoffs. But you have been tuned into and listening to the Off Tackle with John Fina Show, brought to you by Q42 on the Buffalo Rumblings multicast and vidcast net, net, network john is showing everybody the afc champions hat that is brand new that he absolutely has that's the new that's the new skull cap if you want to get it but uh, we appreciate everybody in the chat and uh the the solid showing from bill's mafia and uh, eric actually says 
The show needs a lot more viewers. What a hidden gem. Eric, we thank you. And believe it or not, this show is a hidden gem. Go ahead. What are you going to do? Spread the word. Yeah, the this show, this show is a hidden gem because of you guys, because of the commenters and the people that get you know get to do this with us live. So we appreciate it. But uh, yeah, can't wait. Enjoy this week, uh, Bill's Mafia. It's just... Uh, I, I don't I don't know if it's a high that I could come down off of. So it's just a uh, freaking fantastic. I told I told some friends I was like, yeah, they asked me how I was feeling on Sunday. I was like, my wife could ask me for a divorce and I'd be fine until Tuesday. Like, <laughs> like, 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 like I want a divorce. I'm good, babe. Go ahead. Don't if give her ideas. Don't give her ideas. If you got to go, go. And then about Tuesday, I'd be like, wait a second. Did my wife ask me for a divorce? So yeah. But uh, we love you guys. We appreciate you guys. For me, for John Fina, go Bills. Go Bills.